Okay, so last time we implemented arrays into our code base, and we did it by passing an array to the function. And then when we were in the block of the function, right, we declared that array to be a variable called inputs, and then we used them. And that was just an example. I'm actually going to give you another example, but before I do that, we're going to actually clean this up a little bit even more to help uh, you understand that when we're passing multiple items, yes, we could use an array, but we could just use um, the items themselves. And I'll show you that because in this case, instead of passing an array, if I use a comma without the array, syntax, okay? Then what I would do in here, and this kind of is more clear, right? Uh, because five represents what, right? Members, house, let's just say household members. How about that, okay? And what does the other one represent, right? House size, right? So now, by taking off the uh, brackets, we're actually passing in these values, but in here, we're going to declare them or give them a locally scoped variable. And now, what we could do here is copy this because this is what we'll pass to that function. And notice how, when you do this, if you have, remember, these are arguments that become parameters that are passed into the function. So if you don't use something you've passed in to the function, notice what VS Code is trying to do. It's trying to help you, right? It's trying to give you, hey, you haven't used that. So I'm going to do this here, okay? Okay. All right, so the code still works the same. It's a simple refactor. Now, why did I do this? I did this to first give you some exam. Well, let's actually go look at the code, make sure it's still, I'm gonna stop my server. By the way, I can just go to that URL. There's another way I could do it. Uh, for, go here. I keep saying we're gonna do some browser stuff, but I haven't here, right? So the code base itself is still outputting the same data. Okay, the same information but it's just a little more, to me, readable. So what's another way? Because there are just multiple ways you're gonna see arrays used. So probably one of the most common ways that you see arrays used is actually to store data, okay? Now, in this case, we're running this, our code twice. So how about we create an array that would store the results of not only what's passed in to the code base, but also what is calculated out of the code base, from the code base, right? So how would we do this? Well, first I'd go up to the top and I would set up a constant and I would call it, and I'm actually, I think I saw Daniel do this, CFP, and I'd call it data, or CFP data. Now, and I would set it as an array, an empty array, an array literal, okay? Now, while I was doing this, I actually thought, hmm, because I have seen, now you don't, don't have to do this, but I have seen often, and this might be more Python related, that when you're using constants in the global space, you would actually make them all caps. But I decided I'd go over to chat and ask. So I did. Right? When writing JavaScript and declaring global constants, is it best practice to use all capitalized variable names? That was a really good answer. Which is, you know, if you're doing things like pi, that would make sense, right? And it talks about it's a convention from older programming languages, not specifically JavaScript. So it totally says you can do it, you, you know, it makes sense. But it really says down here, if you're using this as a variable name, then maybe not. And so because we're actually going to use this in to store data, I'm not going to. But I wanted you to see that that is something 
uh, that you may see when you're coding. Okay, so I'm going to revert back to what I had. Now, now that I have this global, right? Now, by the way, I could even get away with not having this as global. I could define it inside of here. But when you're storing data, that is the result of your program running multiple times, it's fairly common in that example to use a global variable. So that's kind of like the more accepted way to do it. So now let's actually implement this concept. So where in the world do I have not just the inputs, right? These are the inputs to my code. I also have the calculated uh, numbers, right? The points, and then I have the total. So it would make the most sense for me to update that um, global array here inside of my start function. Okay, so let's do it here. It kind of makes the most sense. And I would do it right before my console.log. And here's what you would do. You could do CFP data. And because it's already an array, that's empty, we could say dot push. Okay, and when we push, we're adding things into the array. So what is it we would want to push? Well, how about household members, house size, so the two inputs, household points, just looking, okay, comma, house size points, okay, and what else? Total. So let's look at that for a minute. Okay. I think this is just showing because these are inputs and not calculated. I was looking at the difference between the way these looked. Notice how they're a little different color. So that's cool. I think that's the reason it's doing it is because, yeah, so these are cons that are declared in the scope and these are passed in as parameters. Matter of fact, it says right there. All right, so now what does this give us, right? Well, a couple things we can do here is console.log, right? Data. Again, by the way, right? I didn't want to. Could just, I might could use this keyboard shortcut here as well so I have my semicolons here without having to remember it. So let's come over to our output and close this, right? Refresh. So now, interestingly enough, look at what it did, right? So now we have an array that has five apartment, six, two, eight. Okay, so this is the total, six and two. But it's all in one array. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop for a minute and answer the following question, right? So here's your question about this. Does it make sense to have all of this in one array? It's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, but I'm curious now that you've looked at this and look at it on your own side, right? So we have an array that has a length of 10, okay, that represents, in this case, right, that represents us running the data, running our code base with two different inputs. Okay, so pause here. Right, and you can answer it either, actually let's do this, let's actually not put it here, let's put it outside so that, arrays, let's do it here, as long as it's in there. I should start numbering these so I can clearly know what uh, I'm having you answer, and I'll do this, is, uh, I'll say last code along for week four, just so I remember, okay, all right, so pause here answer the question and then let me show you my thinking about it and what we can do about it. Okay. Okay. So in this case what I would want to do 
is I would want to actually have every time I ran it, as a matter of fact, let's add some more, right? Let's add, because what are some of the other, right? So we could say for household, right? We could say a number in that. Yeah, so let's say like, you know, and just come up and actually, I think I'm going to have you next week write a function that randomly determines randomly uh, does this kind of as a way to, to look at it. So let's say three. Okay, so now let's say three, right? And let's say medium. And this is where also if you you really want to run this for every logic block that you have because that would really test it. And, and this gets into what's called test driven development to where you can actually have code that you write that tests your program because you want to make sure that it is doing what you think it's going to do. Okay, you want to make sure of that. All right, so now what I would do, and again, I'm going to, I think as part of the, the last thing I'll have you write, right, uh, as many here that would test each of the different inputs that you could possibly give might be my code challenge. But here's what I want to do is every time I push, okay, every time I push, I'm going to push that as a new array within the empty array. So this would be what we call a multi-dimensional array. Now let's go over and look at it and see now how it's different. Mine's already run. If I come down here, right, this is a multi, right, so this, the array itself has, so that first zero, right, so if we were to say, and we could come down here and say CFP data, right, zero, Right, so that's the inputs, the calculated total, the calculated numbers or the assigned numbers for our code base. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do, and this is going to be the last video because I'm just going to give you, you know, see if you can do this. I'm not going to give you the answer because I want you to play around with it and we could talk about it maybe in attendance or somewhere else. But how many different calls would you have to write or many, how many different times would you have to call start to test all the different inputs right for your two functions right so attempt to do that how many okay so then what you want to do is once you're done with that right this is the last one so um, what you can do is arrays for storing data. Now, as long as I see several in here, right? Um, matter of fact, even do a shout out on Discord maybe for how many you came up with, <laughs> right? Again, this is what we call test-driven development, uh, where we're writing code that tests that. But in the future, know that you could actually have the computer test your, your, your code write what we call test to test your code. Okay, write some of those. Do the commit. Uh, give me your commit history. And by the way, I've already said this, but make sure from here on out, you give me the commit history based on the folder, right? So we're working in W4 in our private repo. So give me your commit history for the W4 um, uh, folder. And that what that does is it then shows me only the commits that you had. And in this case, we have two uh, commits, but those each of those commits have several, um, definitely several things we've done in there. I hope this kind of helps you get introduced to the idea of arrays. And now I'm going to move on and think about how we're going to do the discussion this week. Talk to you later.